with so much at stake in this election for Puerto Rican voters and for Puerto Rico. And this election is not just a choice between Donald Trump and me. It is a choice between two very different visions for our nation. One, his, focused on the past and on himself, and the other, ours, that is focused on the future and on you. Puerto Rico is home to some of the most talented, innovative, and ambitious people in our nation. And Puerto Ricans deserve a president who sees and invests in that strength. We are not going back. <laughs> That's right. That's right. We're not going back. We're not going back. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, Georgia, we can't let up. We got 12 days to run through the tape. We got to knock on doors. We got to make some calls. We got to get our families, our friends, our neighbors, our neighbors' neighbors to turn out. To turn up and turn out. But most of all, we got to show them all our vote is our voice. Our voice is our power. And our power is how we win. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to One Mike Night. This is One Mike Night Talk today. We are One Mike Night Talking. You already know, I'm Marcos Luis, and we are in full throttle with election 2024. And you already know who the two candidates are and the teams and what's happening. But we're here to give you a little more perspective. I'm here with your favorite co-host. He's licensed clinical psychotherapist and author of the book, The Mental Health Pandemic. It's Shane Mark Toll. Welcome back, sir. Hello, it's been a while. It's been a long while, much too long. Indeed, much too indeed. Long. It's, it's good to be back. I'm glad you could make it. We got a lot to talk about today. We want to give some perspective on what's happening in the election. I want to hear your perspective. And we want to talk about some of the things that we've been seeing in the media about uh, Donald Trump's campaign versus Kamala Harris's campaign and the perspective of black men and black people, people of color in this election. Um, over the last couple of days, We've seen uh, some celebrities come forward, which is a little bit unusual, I would have to say. We've, we're seeing now more celebrities come forward mm -hmm. than ever because in the past, no one would talk about their political views in light of one, hurting their career, and two, whatever else may come along with it. So we've seen a lot of celebrities come forward, and I kind of want to know what your perspective is on, on that, first of all. I mean, I think that when celebrities have this platform, especially you now in social media and they have millions of followers, they're influencers. And if you have that kind of, of bandwidth and outreach, I think it's a responsibility to use it wisely and to always think that democracy should never be challenged. Yes. And this is where we are. We're where democracy is being challenged and the erosion of our faith in government. Let's be very clear. Government is not perfect. Absolutely not. Government Absolutely cannot, not. Do, cannot not do everything, but this, the, the contrast is stark between the two candidates we have. One of them has to be flawless the other one is consistently lawless and rude. <laughs> Absolutely. And I'm in awe that the race is still so close. So what does that say about us as a people? What does it say? What does it say? You I know, ask I, you as, as a professional, yeah, what I does it say? A, it speaks volumes because I... My son has a YouTube channel, and we did a podcast a show like this about a week and a half ago. And it was very daunting that this is a young black man who grew up with me that has become so conservative and very Trumpian. But what I, in the 
course of the conversation, what I got her, that he was tapping into something that black men are feeling, especially black straight men. Hmm. And we have to realize that black men are pretty conservative. And I think the way my son explained, he's like, listen, for the last eight years, masculine has been attacked as toxic. So men are feeling that they don't have a space and they're just coexisting in this manosphere where they're seeing that they're, these other marginalized communities are getting more fun than they are upset about LGBTQ trans issues and, and groomers. And, and, and I think, so for a young black man, he does not, they do not feel like no one is listening to them or hears them or just expect them to vote for a certain party just because of virtue of their race. And the, the undercurrent was that these young black men are insulted because when any politician come and talk to them, all they want to talk to them about is social justice reform, criminal reform. While that is important, young black men are entrepreneurs and doctors and lawyers, and they want to know, what are you going to do for my money? What are you going to do with my money, with my taxes? How am I going to get the support I need trying to compete in a market space where I'm constantly at a disadvantage? And I think it's really a microcosm of really what's going on among black men in this society right now and we, mu and we must speak to that yeah, absolutely <laughs> i see that also a problem with not only the black men but white men in general too because we already have you know whatever they've had whatever piece of pie they've had mm -hmm. being divided even further because now it's inclusive to as you said lgbtq plus mm -hmm. people uh you know marginalized people in other facets native americans um you know people in that those categories so there's more being taken away from them and i feel like the one that they support is someone like them who would be a donald trump who is saying they want to make america great again uh -huh. which we know making america great again means reverting back to something where they had more of a piece of the pie than they have and also the dobbs issue is really men have really put them in a peculiar space because I think for some men, they think it's okay until they really think about what are the long-term effects of reproductive freedom and how that impacts all of our lives. And um, Michelle Obama was on yesterday and she made a very compelling case. She said, you have to realize that reproductive rights will affect you. If these abortion laws are in there, Think of your daughter, your nieces, your goddaughter, your mom, your aunt that cannot go to, to access care because it's no longer available. And the fact that they may be bleeding out and they have to wait till they become sepsis to get the care they need. I think it's one in every four women in America lives in a state that have those laws. So... What does that say to us for family planning with our wives and partners? Absolutely. Michigan, and do we I even... I am someone who takes her own advice to heart. I know that if we want to help this country finally turn the page on the politics of hatred and division, we can't just sit around and complain. No, we've got to do something. If we want to usher in the next generation of American leadership, we have got to do something. If we want to elect someone with a character that is worthy of the Oval Office, someone with the strength of heart to guide our country to a better day, we have got to what? Absolutely. And do we even want the government, you know, regulating our bodies in that way? I mean, even you can you think back not only the reproductive rights, but we think back to even with COVID. There are a mm -hmm. lot of people who didn't want to take the vaccine. We oh, knew that perhaps, well, initially when it came out, they were saying that it was the vaccine. 
But as we as we went on, we saw it wasn't a vaccine. Maybe it curbed some of the symptoms or the spreading of, but we weren't even sure. Did we want the government to do that? There were people who decidedly did not take that vaccine Correct. because they didn't want that entering their body. Do we want to have freedom to control our own body? This is how it relates to, you know, to us presently. And and indeed, but also I think <clears throat> for for men, they really need to look at this as you may be the one hold, holding the flowers at the funeral yes. for the women that you love in your life, Absolutely. for your niece and your daughter and your goddaughters. And I think we really need to look at this as an issue that affects, that will affect us because these uh, clinics out there a lot of the work they did was, was preventative. Those are the clinics women that didn't have money would have access to mammograms and pap smear and early detections of a whole variety of cancer. No, when all of that is gone, where do they go to get gynecological care? Because it's, it's health care. Absolutely. Health care. It's health care. And we know that Black women traditionally have had worse health care as Thank it speaks you. to maternal issues and in general... You know, so we need to have a way and a place to allow this to to happen. Yeah, and um, but also I think we also need not to allow our, and I don't want to say arrogance. I, we need not to allow uh, our invalid sense of fear that we're being neglected to empower a decision. That will definitely be detrimental to us. Because feelings are not necessarily facts. You mm -hmm. can feel that, okay, no one is speaking to black men. They only come to us when they want. But, and those are true. But you have to look at the, the two big things here as is reproductive rights and democracy. Yeah. We're all part of something much bigger. We must vote. And we need you. It's time to sing a new song. A song that began 248 years ago. The old notes of downfall, discord, despair no longer resonate. Our generations of loved ones before us are whispering a prophecy, a quest, a calling, an anthem. Our moment right now, it's time for America to sing a new song. Our voices sing a chorus of unity. They sing a song of dignity and opportunity. Are y'all ready to add your voice to the new American song? Because I am. So let's do this, ladies and gentlemen. Please give a big, loud Texas welcome to the next President of the United States, Vice President Kamala Harris. Yes. There is no economy without democracy. Absolutely right. So, Kamala Harris did something which was a little bit unprecedented by a presidential candidate. She laid out some uh, a plan specifically for Black men. This has never been done before. Oh. She addressed the situation. And I want to lay out a couple of the points that she she hit. <clears throat> she wants to build wealth uh, and provide a, an opportunity economic, uh, economically for black men, not just to get by, but to get ahead. That's Some of the things she said was, one, providing a million loans, a million, un, a million forgivable loans yes. for businesses, small businesses. She wanted to champion education and mentorship for good paying jobs in a high demand industry. Correct. Number three, she wanted to support and regulate cryptocurrency and other digital assets to protect people like us. Yeah. And then she also wanted to legalize marijuana to create opportunity and success that hadn't existed before. Correct. Now, some of the things you may or may not be with like me in the marijuana situation i could care less about that has no effect on me but i understand from a business point of view 
Definitely. It's almost like the irony of being locked up for the use of marijuana, now being able to sell it legally and go into business. Correct. And, and, and if we look at the disparities around mm -hmm. how many people that look like us have mm -hmm. those licenses to legally sell, that's one of the things she's tapping into. Like, this is going to be a money making industry. And we, men like us, were the, were the ones that suffered most for from the criminal justice system. So Absolutely. she wants to make this space competitive so men like us can apply and get those licenses and legally make money. Right. And in addition to that, like I said, number one, she wants to help give a million loans out for small businesses so you can start a small business yep. to help you do those things. Legally, profitably, mm -hmm. creating wealth. They just, how about that? And <laughs> so, what is the disconnect that younger black men are not getting right. when she's very clear about what she's offering and we don't even know what Donald Trump is offering. And my thing is not to vote for one or the other, but just to be informed. Be informed. Do the I research. I want people to go out and vote. I, want, I definitely think that black men should hold both of their feet to the fire and say, if you want from me, I need to see what you're doing for me. I need to see what you have done for me. And just ask the very basic questions of both candidates and see where, in, in the reality of this, where does this leave you? Because look at both of their histories. Right. How and what way does this benefit me? Making a decision for which candidate will better for the betterment of me, my people, maybe, and the and the country. And yes. the world. And the world. And the right. world. And so because I'm pissed off with LGBTQ and trans issues, which I don't understand how they're making that connection, because I think one of the things that I harken back to back to was with Obama when he came out. They said that, you know, he did more for the LGBTQ issue, issues that, or population than he did for Black folks. And he said, it is not me to tell you when to advocate for yourself. You have to advocate for you yourself. You have to advocate. Absolutely. You, have to, you have to lobby. You have to hold your feet to the fire. And the people that are making the most noise get the most of everything. So you, we need to make noise. And... And I want us to look at, is it, are we saying, are younger black men saying that you need to come and give us something or we need access? Because that's two different arguments. So two I wonder if there's things. something getting lost between those two things. Do you feel like in this uh, fight, for office, and it is a fight. Uh -huh. Do you feel like people are just um, they the apathy is there now? I mean, are we at a point where they don't care? Yeah, we've had what eight to ten years of this. By the time Donald Trump came, came down those gold escalators, this this country changed. And I think that initially, when he came out, the media and everybody used him as a puppet. And to just get ratings, and they they really thought it was entertainment and funny. But by the time they caught, when they realized that he was really making grounds, and really had garnished a segment of this population that was that was committed to him, it was too late. It was too late. It so they didn't, too late. we didn't see this coming. <clears throat> we didn't, now we know. Now we know. He's recently been called a fascist by someone in his own Republican Party. By many. Think, <laughs> yeah, Republican Party. A few people. Do you think that, you know, that's what this country is looking for? Do you think they want a small group of people to control the political activity of this country in order to move it forward? I think that we have taken democracy for granted. Because even the same people that is, are defending him, they're like, no, he's not going to do that. He's only saying it. He's only talking about it. You know, it's just a big, no big deal. 
And that's what happened in 2016. People just thought, let's just get him in there. It's going to just mess up the whole political space. And he's some, something new. But new does not mean better. In this case, new was disastrous. Disaster. Disaster. And it was disastrous. And in the same podcast with my <laughs> son, he, they were he was talking about, oh, well, Trump gave us checks. I said Trump had nothing to do with that. Absolutely nothing. Could, could we really explain that it was the Democratic Congress and Senate did that? The only smart thing that Trump did, and I can't believe I'm, I'm using the word smart in him in the same sense, on that check. Sign and make that it check. look like, like he was personally giving folks money that belongs to them anyway. And and that's the psychology that he has, and that's the psychology that he's using Correct. to win people over. Mm -hmm. What are these people going to do when he gets into office? The pe the very people that are supporting him are the very people who are dependent upon so many things that he's going to cut off. Yes, and he's going to just be black. He's, he's going to be men like Elon Musk. Mm -hmm. He's going to take half of his wealth. He's going to be the first person he's going to go after because he wants to be more powerful than any, anybody else. So, and that's what, that's why democracy is so fragile because what else is out there? We, we've got so comfortable that that's not going to happen. No, he's not going to do that. He's not going to say that. He's only, because most dictators were placed there genuinely. Yes. And they were elected. So, but this man is telling you exactly what he's going to do. The enemy from within. I'm going to use the Justice Department the way I want. And I'll bring out the National Guard when I want into cities. That should be scary for all of us. Absolutely should. And I encourage you, and we've encouraged people before to take a look at that 2025 report. Even yes. if he adopts one of the things on that report. We're in How trouble. about that? Yes, even, even if one. one, we are in trouble. Even if he won as the one that he um, take away the Department of Education, do you know how that would dismantle us? Dismantle everything. Everything. Even if he, you know, locks up journalists for saying anything negative about him, I have to go back and erase a lot of these. Uh, these. Be <laughs> he might be you coming know what I mean? for us. He exactly, might he's coming for me. Yeah, he's coming for all of us in yes. many different ways. And that is scary. It's very scary. That is scary. In thought that in 2024 we're having this conversation a week before election, saying that if he wins, we're we're going to have to scroll over social media. Absolutely. How disturbing is that? Very. So, like, how do we encourage people to wake up? Well, first of all, like we said, read the 2025 report. That's number one. And also do the research. Find out what your candidate stands for. Find out what the two candidates stand for. Um, a lot of people have talked poorly about Kamala in the last few years in office. She's the vice president. She's Thank not you. the pres president. Anything Correct. that she's said, she's probably given, you know, Joe Biden, <laughs> uh, you know, a couple of of her thoughts, but ultimately he's the one that makes the decisions. The decision. So yeah. wherever she stood on these, you know, things, and even now when she's when she had been speaking, she had to be respectful of what yes. the yes. office she's in, but what her agenda will be. Correct. And I think even before this, before Joe Biden dropped out, she refused to call any of the Congress people or any of the folks that were out there saying, no, he's okay. She's like, I don't want it. I don't even want it to be an appearance of impropriety that I mm -hmm. might be colleaguing with them. I'm just going to leave this alone. And that shows respect and commitment. Joe Biden had a horrible interview, but she was out there one second after that interview by, we will not allow 90 minutes to define his whole presidency. That is not fair. Right. Do I think do I think he should have dropped out? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. In yes. retrospect, we see. We see yeah. what happened. And by the same token, you know, she stood by and supported him if that's what he needs to do, because that's but, what she signed up for. That was her commitment. Yeah. That was her job. But that's also character. 
Yes, and absolutely. And that's we, what's missing from this other person. Get back? Are we ever going to get back to character? <laughs> are we ever going to get back to good people? And is this the man you want your son to emulate? Is this the man you want to marry your daughter? To marry your daughter? Right. Will you leave your wife in a, in a room with this man alone? Like, those are the things. That's exactly the thing. And maybe not. Maybe that's what this country has turned into since the introduction to him to the world a few years ago. He's so brash, you know, and his 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 style. Many people have adopted that. They want they want, you know, remember, I don't remember know if you remember, I think it was a meeting for the uh wasn't the UN, but there was some meeting where all the leaders of the world, the world summit meeting. Yes, it was at the UN. Moved everyone out of the way to get up to the front. The US. Yeah, moved he everyone. Was, he pushed, yes, he just like get out of the way. Get out of the way. Yeah. Is that what we want? Is that what we want to be known for? But I think that's where we that's where we're at this point right now that any way we pivot one way or the other is going to be very telling. So we hope that we're going to pivot in the right place. Absolutely. And I really hope that common sense will prevail, that democracy will prevail, yeah. and, and peace. Because <clears throat> I am confident that he will lose, but I'm also confident that he will create mayhem in the streets. He's not going to go away easily. He He's not, not going to go away quietly. So even did this election can be going into January. With all of Anyone the who thinks it's going away on that same day that we vote is not. sadly mistaken. Sadly but mistaken. He, but what do, you, what do you also have to realize that Kamala Harris is an attorney. She's an AG. She, she has is. a team willing, ready, and able to challenge every petition he comes up with. They're, wait, they're just waiting for him. Right. Yeah, I waited for him. But my scary thought is that if this ends up before the Supreme Court, we it's it's a wrap. Yeah. It's a wrap. You're right. And You're and, right. and he could have pushed it all the way there. Right. And the the other thing is, is should he be above the law, which is where he's been this whole time? He's still right, he's still um, skating by. He's still skating by, but you know. Right. The longest rope has an end, let's hope. November 5th is the end of the road for him. I know he's not going to go quietly, but I am really hoping that the people that want to go and be violent for him look at what happened to those people from January 6th, that a lot of them went to jail, get real time, and he has done nothing for them. Nothing. Absolutely. Nothing. And the whole platform that the other candidate, Kamala Harris, is running on is unity. We Thank need you. to bring this country together. We, we can have different we views, but we need to bring the country together where it's essential. Correct. And then we need to stop looking at our neighbors as our enemies. Right. We can disagree and still go and have a drink, but because that's policy, it's not personal. And I've been having this conversation with my colleagues and my even my family members, but we can disagree on policy. This is where I stand. I may not agree with where you stand, but it doesn't mean that I love you any less. Right. Exactly. Not personally. But we, but, but we need to have these serious conversations. We do. I think women need to have the conversations about reproductive rights with the men in their lives. Yes. And explain to them the, the far-reaching effects that it will have on, on family planning. Absolutely. If a, if a woman goes into substance, gets sick, let's say she survives it, but she may not be able to have a child after that experience. Right. That is part of your family planning. That's of part of your, your legacy. And that's the importance of having the conversation with someone else is because you're educating at the same time and there's a discourse of information and we actually learn from each other. Imagine that. Imagine <laughs> learning something from somebody else. Yep. No, but we're taking we're, a different viewpoint. We're in this space where <laughs> we, we we don't want to learn. We know and we don't care. And but you know, I really think I'm really open that this conversation this conversation reaches the mass, especially black men. Yes, I think white men and other men of color need to definitely be aware as well. But I think for men like us, we have the most to lose. We will Absolutely. lose our 
we will lose our wives and daughters and the people we love at higher rates. If we have a pretty good health care system and we're st our infant mortality for a country is high, but infant mortality around black women is exponential. Right. In Brooklyn, right here. And I did and forget I, to mention. I, I can't believe Go it. ahead. That's, that's exactly one of the things that she's planning with the, you know, with her program for black men is to increase health care accessibility yes. for things like sickle cell, uh, diabetes, and yes. mental health. The things that are important that we preventative need. Preventative. Preventative. Healthcare. Preventative. And that was a whole, that was kind of the platform that Obama had too. Yeah. Yes. And it kept getting pushed away. Yeah. Preventative. But Preventative. We really, we really need to challenge ourselves because I, I even talked with the conversation with my son. I said, do we need to also look at our internal bias? Maybe we're thinking a woman really can't run this country and we're using all these other issues to cover our insecurity around a around having a strong woman running this country. And I think that's a valid <clears throat> question that's to valid question. yourself. Well, listen, um, let, let's clear that up right now because a lot of you uh, young black men, your mama ran your house. Your mama was the leader of the house. How about that? Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. not for everyone, but I'm saying, you know, think about it in terms of that, where your mother single-handedly, I know I came from a single parent household, where my mother single-handedly um, sacrificed her life, put me through school, put me through boarding school, through Ivy League, through all these things for the betterment of. And that's what Kamala is doing. And But you see the betterment in you for you. But a lot of these younger men that grew up in poverty, I think a lot of them ended up resenting their moms right. and hating their dads for not being around but resenting the mom because she had to be the disciplinarian and do everything. Right. But here's the, here's the kicker is the some of the responsibility falls on you. It's yourself. If you're seeking knowledge, if you want to do better, Thank you. if you want to, or do you just want to continue on being the same so that a lot of it falls on you. But you know, but I this also is the choice that we need to make now. It really is. But I, and I'm sure you've noticed this, whatever, ideology that you have running around in your head, there is so much information about that out there in the blogosphere and social media that really supports your thinking yes. and make you feel that you you are grounded and this is right. With this conversation I had with my son, I really wish it's an hour long, it's a little long, but what I thought about it is look at it from mental health and how that inf influence politics and, our, and, our, and our, our daily lives. Because this kid is, when he's able to make a statement like, January 6th mm -hmm. was not an insurrection, but BLM wa was a riot. Mm. Mm. And came up with facts, and I'm like, where did you get this from? What's your fact check? What's your... But he was... And I'm... It really bothers me. And I really think that his voice is really an echo chamber for what other Black men are feeling and thinking. And there's... Up to today, just yesterday, NBC did interviews with young Black men in, in different cities. And most of them were saying they're going to vote for Trump. Interesting. <clears throat> I had to sort of force my young guy to vote. Um, you know, he's in his 20s, but in the last voting election, he didn't vote. Um, he could have done an out of, he was out of the country, but he could have done an out of the country vote. Mm -hmm. Before that, he didn't vote. But this time around, I was like, are you voting? Oh, I don't know. I don't even care. I said, but you have to care. Yeah. You should have cared when you were away, when you were, you yes. know, over in the other country. Uh -huh. You should have. You know, because the presidency affects what goes on in the world. Correct. So it could have affected why you came back. You don't even yeah. know. So these are the important things you have to understand. You have to think not only for yourself, but think outside of, of right. yourself for the betterment of everyone. And and, and a very quick, fair question to him. 
Maybe you should vote for your mom, your sisters, your the women in, in the your girlfriend, right. the women in your life that you care right. about. Yeah. Because if she gets pregnant and you're in a state where she has no health care and you take her to the hospital and they're like, we can't see her because we have an abortion law. Mm -hmm. Okay, how is that not something you should care about? And I really right. think you need to move it from this abstract way of thinking into the very personal. Like if your homegirl gets sick to somebody you went to school with, you care about, she's a sister to you, and you know her significant other is not there, and you have to be the one to take her to the hospital. Mm -hmm. Or you That's have right. to be the one to be there, not holding her hand as she experienced a miscarriage. Traumatic, right. but very, very, very possible. Mm -hmm. Very Absolutely. possible. Yeah. So, brother, I hope and pray that they hear, they hear our heed. <laughs> Man, I'm praying, I'm praying, I'm praying. I am too. And when we wake thing, up at the six, we could. Right. And, you know, in the final thoughts, I think the best thing we say is educate, educate yourself on the candidates. Yes. And vote. Not making a decision to vote is making a decision not making a decision to vote is giving up your power. Right. right. This is the biggest thing you, the strongest arsenal you have as a citizen in America is your vote. Why would you not use Why it? Why would you not? Think about how long it took us as people of color to Thank get you. that right, for women to get that right. Thank I just posted you. something on my Facebook page today where a woman was being interviewed and she said back in 1960s, the black people in Mississippi, which is where she's from, they had to pay $2 to vote. All the white people voted for free. All right. So what the hell is that? You know what I'm saying? Like, we uh, have come a long way. Yeah, way. The, Yes. And imagine how many more black people could have voted and how many didn't vote because they didn't have that $2. Because they didn't have the $2. Yeah. That's it. Scary, right? Very scary. So uh, I think we're going to leave them on that when note. Talk again, mm -hmm. where this is more joyous. <laughs> but I just want to say that you know, from an immigrant perspective, and I think we come here with our hearts and our families, and we bring light to a place, and we're grateful to America for making space for us. And I know in this time we don't we may not feel that way, but this is still the greatest country in the world. There is Absolutely. nowhere else you can come and be and be who you are. I just got an award for my work in mental health, and one of the things I said that nothing prepared me. This young kid coming from Guyana started at Boys and Girls High School. And scared as hell because the kids would look so damn big that my life turned out the way it did. Only in America that I could have the story that I have, that I'm able to talk about mental health, write a book, travel the world, make impact. Make an only impact. In America, this, only in America, my dreams is attainable. Absolutely. And I really want people to think about that. This country is, it gives, we're not perfect, let's be clear, we're not. But if we are able to make what Obama called a more perfect union, this is the call that we need to go out and vote. And we need to elect people that will continue the possibility. There you go. Country. You just said it. Continuing the possibility. The possibility. Yes. Right. Wow. Well, Shane Mark Toll, thank you very much. Congratulations on your award. Keep you. sharing and helping everyone and your excellence. We appreciate it. Thank you for your time because time you is will. the most valuable thing you can Indeed. give. So we appreciate that. Find him. Tell us how thank you can Thank you for doing you. this. Oh, thank of course. <laughs> for creating a space for folks to come. And, and thank you for the job you do. I really appreciate it. I appreciate it's hard that. work. I don't think you're getting paid for it, but that's it. <laughs> let's, let's continue doing it. And you know, you can always call on me anytime.
Absolutely. Tell them how they can get in touch with you, and please do. Uh, Shane Tull, Clinical Psychotherapy, and Facebook and IG, and um, everywhere else, I think. <laughs> so, there you go. But it's always, always great. It's always great to be with you, man. Good Make luck. sure you reach out to Shane Tull on those platforms. The show is called One Mike Night, O-N-E-M-I-C-N-I-T-E, on all social media. My name is Marco Luis. Hit me up. Make sure you check out all the episodes. This episode is a one mic night talk where we're talking about the issues that affect you and how we can solve them. This is one mic night talk. I'm Marco Suiz. Thank you. Bye bye.